Okay, now we're going to be working on finding the derivative of an inverse function. We have to work on inverse functions first. Okay, so remember when we were doing composite functions where you, you're given an f of x, you're given a g of x, and you have to compose, you have to find f of g of x. So you're going to plug this whole thing into that x. So this is what that looks like. So you write 3 instead of x, 3 parentheses squared plus 2, and inside the parentheses, this thing is going to go. You square that thing, so 5x subtract 4 times 5x subtract 4, and then you're going to, the, you have to multiply each one of these things by 3, and then whichever of the terms that you can add to at the end, you combine terms, and there you have it. Well, you're going to be using that skill for inverse functions. So look at, pay real close attention to this formula right there. You're going to find, you have, you're going to find the derivative of the inverse by using this theorem. The derivative of the inverse is equal to one over the derivative, and inside that derivative, wherever the x is, you'll put in the inverse function. So here's our function. We need to find the inverse and we need to find the derivative of this original function. So to find the inverse, you first rewrite it as y is equal to, then you swap the x's and y's, then you solve for y, so we add 2 to both sides, divide both sides by 3. At the very last thing we're going to do, since this is y squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides, and then once we do that, we can rewrite it at with the inverse notation. All right, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to cover that back up so we're not distracted by all that information. Then, whoops, then we're going to find the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So the derivative of f of x is just 6x. And the inverse, we already determined, is the square root of x plus 2 over 3. So when we plug all that into here, 1 over 6x, and instead of the x, we plug in the, so the derivative, you'd put 1, the derivative of the inverse, it's 1 over 6x, but where x goes, that's where you put the inverse, and this was the inverse. So let's try one more. So here we have a square root function. So we're going to change it to y and x, I mean we're, y equals, and we're going to swap out the x and the y. Look at, we're going to need to square both sides to get rid of that square root. Then you're going to add 1 to both sides. And then the last step, you're going to divide by 4. So there is our inverse function right there. x squared, subtract 1, all over 4. Okay, let's see if I, yep. And remember, we need to find the inverse, which is what we just did. And we need to find the derivative. Well, to find the derivative, rewriting that as 4x plus 1 to the 1 half would be helpful. So that's what we're going to do. You bring the 1 half down in front, and then you subtract 1, or subtract 2 over 2. And you bring that, whoops, you bring the 1 half down here, all right? Then you're going to multiply that whole thing by the derivative of the inside. So let's see. Yep, we brought the 1 half down, then we subtracted 2 over 2, or subtracted 1 from the exponent, and then we multiplied that whole thing by the derivative of the inside, and that simplifies to this. 4 times 1 half is 2. This negative exponent brings this whole thing to the denominator, and something to the 1 half just means the square root. All right, so now we have our derivative, and we have our inverse. Here's our inverse. Here's our derivative. And remember, Inverse function says 1 over the derivative. 
and the derivative is of this, it, and then it's 4 times the inverse, and then plus that 1. So let's see again. I'm going to cover up all that stuff so it's not so dizzying. So look at what I did here. So 1 over, here was our, our um, derivative was 2 over the square root of 4x plus 1. And remember, where the x goes, that's where we put the inverse. And this is the inverse notation. And let's see what can cancel. Well, 4 times the dividing 4, those cancel. And then look at now what we're left with is x squared, subtract 1, plus 1, so the 1's can cancel. And then what we're left with is the square root of x squared. That cancels. So now what you have is 1 over 2 over x. Well, we're going to multiply top and bottom by x over 2. And so what you end up with is the derivative of the inverse is x divided by 2. That's it.